we have one of the biggest names in sports media today. It's Tuesday, May 23rd. I'm senior writer Owen Poindexter, and this is Front Office Sports Today. Over the last decade, ESPN's Mike Greenberg has established himself as one of the most central gravitational forces in sports media, first through his show with Mike Golick, Mike and Mike, and now with Get Up, which recently turned five years old. He also just published a book called Got Your Number, which goes through each number one to 100 and discusses which sports figure owns that number. My colleague Mike McCarthy and I had a lengthy conversation with Greeny on his show, Life at ESPN, especially as it goes through some painful changes, the NBA playoffs, and plenty more. Here's our conversation with Mike Greenberg. Good morning. This is Mike McCarthy and Owen Poindexter of Front Office Sports Today. We are delighted to welcome Mike Greenberg of ESPN. Big FOS welcome to Mike Greenberg. Hi, guys. Thank you very much for having me. Greeny, let's talk about your five-year-old's morning show on flagship ESPN, Get Up. Launched in 2018, you just had your most watched April ever. Why do you think the show is clicking? Well, I think we've matured, you know, I, you know, um, the, the, I, I've launched two big shows on ESPN over the years. Uh, one was Mike and Mike and the other is this. The biggest difference is that Mike and Mike did not launch as a big show. We launched and we were literally the only people who knew we were on. And by the time anyone found us, we had matured. We had figured out what we were doing. We had, we had learned what we wanted to do. And, um, we, we were an overnight success about about five years into our tenure, maybe a little less, three or four years. And and um, get up was just the opposite. You know, we launched under an enormous microscope and an enormous amount of attention. And so the world watched, you know, the sports media world watched us go through the growing pains that I think are necessary in, in, in trying to create anything. A daily show is not an easy undertaking. I'm, I'm not trying to suggest this is the hardest work in the world to do, but trying to create a television show that the largest possible number of sports fans are going to find interesting, um, it's, it's not that obvious. It's not that easy because we knew that our charge was, was to be a little bit different from what's been on before, but not too different, or at least we figured out that what the audience wanted was for us not to be too different. And so finding the right mix in all of that takes some time. Um, but we have an excellent group of people working on the show. I mean, the team on Get Up is so good, led by the aforementioned Pete McConville. But we have just a, you know, I'm the only one who sits up there every single day. So people associate it with me. But there are so many people who work on that show every day who are the, they're just the best and, and, you know, pour their hearts and souls into it at, at, at difficult hours. Um, and so I, I think we have finally figured out sort of the sweet spot of what the audience wants us to be. And I think added to that, we have developed the ability to be nimble. So, you know, the show has to evolve. You can't, the media world, the world in, at large just changes so much. It evolves so quickly that, that what people want from us, um, what people wanted us to do six months ago is not exactly what they want us to do today. And six months from now, it'll be a little bit different. And I think our team has been together long enough now that we are able to evolve with the time. Um, So I I think that's probably the best answer. I I, I think we've matured. I think the audience has gotten used to us. I mean, there's an expression, it, it comes from radio. At least I know it from my many, many years in radio, but I think it applies here too. And that is you have to let a show bake. Like you got to put it in the oven and you got to let it bake a little while. And people want to, to, to form these conclusions about shows. It's one thing to put a show on the air that's a scripted 30 minute, like let's use a sitcom like Seinfeld, my, my favorite show ever. You know, you, you, the first episode is probably going to be the best episode because they spend all their time writing and they've had, you know, the first episode of a daily TV show is probably going to be the worst episode because that's when you start figuring out all the things that you guessed wrong at and you start changing them. So you got to let it bake. So I think now we've been in the oven a while and we've figured out this is what the audience wants. This is what they like. This is what the people we work for want. This is what they like. This is what we're capable of. This is what we can't try and do. And so I hope that we're still, well, I know that we are still much closer to the beginning of it than we are 
to the end. I hope the show goes on long past the time that I'm the host of it. And I don't have any intention of being not the host of it for a long time. That was not good English, but you know what I mean? Um, so, you know, I think we're just getting started. I, I hope that, that our most viewed years are still in front of us. And Greeny, if I could follow up on that, if you could elaborate on that sweet spot, like where, where have you found you should just meet expectations for what a sports show is and where have you found that you can differentiate yourselves and be unique? Well, I think that, um, what I mean by that is there are days. So look, so we, we come on between sports center, which is the flagship news and information sports show in history, right? It is, it is the Rolls Royce of sports news and information programming. So we come on between that and Stephen A, who is by far the most, uh, the best known and, and most um, viewed and listened to and paid attention to sports media pundit, right? I mean, he has taken debate to a whole new level and, and, and all of that. And we have to find the mix between those things because I'm not Stephen A. Um, and, and so people are not going to come to me to hear me giving super strong opinions day and night and, and all that kind of stuff. That's, that's, he's the best at that. And if I, if I tried, if I tried to make the show that I don't think it would work because we would be like him, but worse. And if I tried to make the show just news and information, I don't think that would work because then we'd be just like sports center, but worse. So that's what I mean. We've had to find the right place in between the right mix of insight, analysis, debate, discussion, humor, um, all those things, we've had to find sort of the right, just enough of, you know, put in, uh, you know, a sprinkle of this and two tablespoons of that and, and each of those. And, and I don't know that I could tell you exactly what that mix is, Owen, but I think we've just sort of found it. You, you, you keep experimenting with it. You know, it's, it's, I don't know, I'm not a chef, so I don't know exactly how chefs do this. But when you're making a sauce, I'm guessing you always see that thing where they stick a little wooden spoon in there and they taste it. And they, all right, so we try a show today and then you taste it. How did that feel? That felt pretty good, but I think we need a little more humor. Okay, try that tomorrow. Put it, okay, well now, but we needed a few more highlights. Okay, try that tomorrow. I, I, that's what I mean when I say I think we have finally come to a place where we're like, okay, we've got it. This is kind of what it is. And, and um I don't know that I could define it any better than that, but we've we've sort of got the right blend, I think, of all the right ingredients. You know, our show is funny um, because people just walk up to you in the street and they just start a conversation. They don't introduce themselves like they just feel like, well, we know each other, obviously, you know, because our show is very intimate. It's very personal. And, um, you know, so people will just walk up to me and be like, Greeny, let me ask you, you know, kind of thing. And I'm like, hi, my name is Mike, you know. Um, but, but, but I take that as the greatest compliment. And it really goes back to our days on the radio too. Um, people I think thought of Mike and me that way as just people that they know we're not, we're not, uh, detached. We're not removed in the way that some people on television and radio are. Um, I, I think we feel like people that they know, and that's, uh, I think that's another part, Owen, to what you asked me of sort of the secret sauce of this. It's that everyone kind of lets their guard down. We're not we're not talking on TV today. We're just talking to each other. And there happen to be cameras in the room. And everyone is sort of and we're wearing microphones. So everyone is hearing a conversation that we very well might be having anyway. <laughs> you know, like like we like that. I mean, uh, we used to have uh, Dominique Foxworth and Ryan Clark together on Wednesdays. And those guys love each other. And they they egg each other on. And we all have friends like that. Right. We all have friends who e each of them, when they're on their own, are funny. But then when they're together, they, they just sort of elevate it because they're constantly going at it with each other. And and that's that's the dynamic of the show that um, that, that I think people feel like they're just they're just in the middle of a conversation that might be going on, even if we weren't being paid to have it. And um, I think that has been really great for all of us. Yeah, and actually that kind of answers something I was thinking of asking you, which is like, what do you do when like on days when your takes are just the most vanilla takes you can have? It's like, yeah, what you saw in the field is is what happened and I don't really have much more to add. But I feel like that dynamic, that like friendly, like we're all just chatting here. Uh, like I once saw a study that people who follow soap operas, like 
like they're happier as if they had more friends and it's because <laughs> like they're just like more you know they feel like I- i'm involved in these complex relationships um, and I feel like that can be true for for talk shows or podcasts where you just feel like I'm just chatting with my friends. Like they're the ones talking, but like, I feel like I'm in there too. I think that's right. I, I think that's what we've, I hope, I think that's what we have created. Um, and and look, I have such a big group of people. Um, you know, if, if you watch our show every day, you've got a lot of friends. Coming up, we talked to Greeny about the NBA playoffs, NBA rights negotiations, and the layoffs at ESPN. We'll have the rest of our conversation right after this. Here's what's trending now. You can defer payments of a full NetSuite implementation for six months. 33,000 companies have already upgraded to NetSuite, gaining visibility and control over their financials, inventory, HR, e-commerce, and more. Everything they need to reduce manual processes, boost efficiency, build forecasts, and increase productivity. Whether your business generates millions or hundreds of millions of dollars, take advantage of this special financing offer of no payments or interest for six months at netsuite.com slash front office. That's netsuite.com slash front office. You know, unfortunately, ESPN just had some layoffs. There's another round coming. Talent will come under the microscope this summer. What's the mood like? You know, I, I think that being in New York, it's it's difficult for me to say right now. I mean, I've been on the road now for about a month and, and being in New York, it's different than being in Bristol where, um, you know, you're surrounded by so many people. We have such a small group. I mean, generally speaking, there are only like three of us who are on the air there every day. Um, I would just say, as I said a minute ago on that, you know, I understand. I think we all understand that that the, this is the reality of of, of life in corporate America. Um, it is a a necessary evil, and all I try to do is is you know support the people who need it when they need it the most, be that emotionally or any other way that I can. And um, you know it's a tough time, and um, that there's there's really not much more I can say about it than that. The mood the mood where I work is, you know, I think is very different than it is in other places. The NBA has been fascinating this year because ratings were down during the regular season. Ratings were down for the All-Star game. And all of a sudden, the playoffs start and the association takes off. They're posting their biggest audiences in nine, ten years for some of these series. Why do you think that? Is it the, the players, the teams? The games have been great. I mean, I, you know, I, 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 can't, I don't know exactly why. I'm sure there's data that would tell you exactly why. But the bottom line is I can say that, I mean, the playoffs have been terrific. I mean, we've had... Look, we just came off a series in which we had Steph Curry facing LeBron James, and it went six games. Those are overwhelmingly the two biggest stars in the sport. That That's like if you got six consecutive games of Tom Brady versus Aaron Rodgers, you know, in the NFL, they would rate really well. It's, it's not a mystery. Um, you know, you got great stars. And I'll say this, I'm covering the Western Conference Finals. And that game the other night, as we have this conversation, we're getting set to do game two. Game one was magnificent. I mean, the the first half show that Nikola Jokic put on, I think was one of the great individual performances that I've seen. You know, the NBA was my first love as a kid 50 years ago, going to the garden with my dad, you know, the smell of cigar smoke in the air. I, I still, I mean, basketball is my first love. And I mean, the show that Nikola Jokic put on in the first half, on Tuesday night was about as good as anything I think I've ever seen. And then the Laker comeback in the second half and the shot making, I mean, everything these guys threw up was going in. It was just a magnificent game. So I'm not at all surprised that it rated well, because it was fantastic. Um, The NBA, I think has great players playing great games. So that, that it's not that complicated to me. Um, It's, it's, it's a great sport and they have huge stars playing it. And do you think the numbers that you're delivering proves to the NBA that ABC and ESPN together, Disney together, is still the right media partner moving forward as it begins rights negotiations? I hope so. I mean, you know, again, th- those conversations take place in rooms that I'm not in, but I don't know why you wouldn't want to be with us. We, we, we cover the sport so much, so thoroughly, um, you know, we have this terrific show every single day that Malika hosts NBA Today, which is awesome. I think I think it's sort of become the basketball water cooler spot, uh, you know, and, and such a terrific and 
diverse array of voices talking about it every single day. Um, you know, I, I know our show, we have so much passion for it between Stephen A and Michael and Jalen, um, you know, and, and our broadcast team is uh, teams are exceptional and our reach is exceptional. So, you know, if I were in the room, I feel like I could sell the heck out of it. Um, you know, I'm not there, but I, I, I certainly hope that it continues because I, I think it's been great for all parties involved. Yeah. Last question, Greeny, because we know you got to prepare for, uh, as you say, the Western Conference Finals. But, you know, you and Mike Golick were together for 20 years. Do you ever see yourselves doing a reunion? Uh, you know, maybe on Get Up, a Mike and Mike reunion. <laughs> I have no idea. You know, it's it, it has been a long time. Um, I, the one thing I would say is so many things have happened in my life that I would not have guessed would happen that that. You know, I've learned never to say never to anything. So I, I really have no, it's not something we've talked about is what I can. The only thing I can say with certainty is it's not a conversation that has happened. Um, who knows what will happen into the future right now? I have yeah. so much on my plate. I, I, I don't really have time to think about anything else. Yeah. I don't even know how you found the time to do a book. I mean, the book was three the, or four shows. The book was, was, I like writing on planes, uh, starting to travel again, made it a lot easier to write. Um, you know, the get up show doesn't travel very much, but when I started covering the NBA, all of a sudden, you know, we're flying back and forth between all the series. I was on a flight. I want to say there was a stretch last year where I was on a flight, at least one every day for, I mean, I, I think there was about a six week stretch there where I took about 40 flights and that's the best time to write. So I, I pretty much wrote the entire book um, on those on those flights. Uh, let me tell you, Boston to San Francisco is a long way. <laughs> so you can write a lot uh, on that flight, especially the westbound one. So um, that's where I found the time to do it. Yeah. Well, Greeny, thank you so much. Uh, congrats on the book. Congrats on Get Up. Congrats on NBA Countdown and uh, the NFL Draft. My pleasure. Thank you, fellas. That's it for today. Congratulations to Carmelo Anthony, who called it a career on Monday. He leaves the NBA having played 19 seasons, 10-time All-Star. He has an NBA scoring title, three Olympic gold medals, a Social Justice Champion Award, ninth on the all-time scoring list between Shaq and Moses Malone. He's earned $262.5 million in playing contracts. He has his own media company and venture firm, and he will be headed to the Hall of Fame as soon as he's eligible. Thanks for listening. We will see you tomorrow.